Well, good morning. My name is David Hunsinger, and I am here for this Wednesday, August 27th version of Keystroke Live. Today, we're going to be talking about transaction file splits, and thank everyone for coming. I do have you um, muted, so uh, at the end, I will unmute everybody so you can ask questions. But uh, Keystroke Live, same Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and same login information. I try to send an email out Tuesday telling you what it's about. Today we're talking about transaction file splits and this is we're kind of going into more detail on certain topics this month and next month and this is a uh, topic I really like. I think it's a really cool unique aspect of Keystroke the way we handle the transaction database. And what is the transaction database? It's anything transactional, so that's invoices, orders, purchase orders, audit entries, clerk in and out records, all of that information goes into the transaction file. And rather than having one big file that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, We've set it up so it starts out at KSTR0001 and goes up to KSTR9999. That's a thou or 10,000 transaction files. You can vary size their settings, but it basically allows for unlimited transaction plus speed of not having to handle these massive files that are hundreds of megabytes or gigabyte. Um, and so it's easier to get at the more recent information. Files are all number, numbered sequentially. They're actually kept track of and indexed by date. And uh, it's easy to move the files around. So last year's transactions or the year before, you can push aside so you're not backing them up on a daily basis. I'm going to go in and show you a few things in Keystroke about the um, transactions. So first I'm going to go to Keystroke here. So if I go to the configuration manager of Keystroke, just going to select that under settings and oh sorry, settings and database, we have the transaction file. Now you can choose to split your transaction file based on size, week, month, year, or quarter. The size does about 40 megabytes. Um, the, the typical rule of thumb is you get about a thousand transactions per megabyte. So, uh, you know, 40 megabytes would be 40,000 transactions. Um, if you don't do a lot of transactions, you know, I really recommend month or year to split on. Um, our business here, SBS, we do I don't know, two to 500 transactions a month. So we split on year, and so we've got everything on um, a year file. Why do it there? Well, I can keep last year and this year and push everything from 2012 and before aside. Um, if you do seven, eight, ten thousand 10,000 transactions a month, you might want to split on month because that'll make it a little easier. But really, size, month, or year is why, what you would want to do. Why would you do size? Well, you don't really care. You'll just let it get to 40 megabytes, close one, open another. When I talk about this open and closing files, where does that manifest itself? Well, you'll never see it running a report or searching for a transaction. Where you see it mostly, and I am going to get out of the... Um, of the configuration manager and goes to go to the sales manager is when I do transaction edit print invoice and say by number hit control page up so here I have January you'll see right at the top January 1st through January 31st and I can click previous file here or hit control page up I'll just click it now I have December I can hit control page up now I have November, control page up. So I'm able, I'm splitting monthly, I'm able to page up through those transactions. If I pick a particular customer and hit control page up to browse through their transactions, I'll never see that seam 
Again, when I run a report, I'll never see that seam. It's really right here. Now, if I hold down Shift and hit F12, this is the system status screen. Just gives you a little insight. Let's me know I have KSTR0125. Uh, that's the file I have open. I think the current file is uh, 132, so KSTR0132. Um, the transaction date is this 10501, which is October 1st, and 10532, which is November 1st. That's the date range from the first second of October 1st, 2013 to the first second of November 1st, 2013. What are those numbers? It's just a counter. Those are the numbers of days since January 1st, 1985. So it's it's not rocket science. It's just a counter. That's why we didn't have any trouble with Y2K is because it wasn't really a big deal for us because we're just counting days. There's a period in four digits. What are those four digits? That's just decimal day. So if it was period 5000, that would be 12 noon on uh October 1st, 2013. So that's just the decimal day. And really, transactions, audit entries, uh, clerk login, logs out, they are all indexed by that date, basically that number there. So that's how Keystroke manages that. What does that look like? Um, if I... I'm going to switch. We have an application called header. So in the command prompt, I ran, ran header from the keystroke directory forward slash D means I'm looking at a different set of data, and I'm in D1. That's my sample data. And if I move to the, this is what I get when I run header. Here are my file. Oh, and KSTR0130 is the current. We were looking at 125. It's got a start date, an end date. It remembers what the file forward, the next file is 126, file back, the previous file is 124, and it tells me the size. They're about 13 megabytes, so they're all 10, 13 megabytes. But you can kind of see the pattern here that um, if I look at file 17, it ends, and same time and date, file 18 begins. File 18 ends, 10, 3, 18, file 19. So there's a chain of how it remembers. Now, this KSTR, the way to think about that, that's the current transaction, and it knows to stick it back into the current transaction file. What are some of the, the pitfalls of this method is, if you future date a transaction, if I date a transaction in 2015, and then my file splits during 2014, that transaction is going to say, whoa, ho, ho, I need to get out of this file and into the current file. So you'll get a little message, hey, you have a, and it's post-dated transaction, even though it's future, that's the term we use. You, you will pack that file, and Keystroke will say, hey, Here's a transaction dated in 2015. Let's get it out of this older transaction file, say 130, and let's put it in 131. It'll do the same thing, too, as if you have something dated a year ago. It'll say, hey, I need to take it out of this transaction file and move it into that transaction file from a year ago. So whenever we're talking about packing, if you're talking to me or somebody um, here, our answer is always going to be you don't need to pack. It's not part of your current ma um, required maintenance. The reasons to pack are um, it re-indexes everything. So if you ever see product codes or stock numbers out of order, you'd want to pack the file because that would re-index it to get it in order. Um, if you've deleted a lot of transactions, it will remove any tr deleted transactions. And the other thing it'll do for the transaction files is say, hey, this transaction doesn't belong in this file, let's get it in the right one. So it'll move it to an older transaction file or a newer transaction file if you need to. I can move up and down this list. 
And if I move all the way to the top, I'm at transaction file 42. So that is the oldest transaction file in my directory. Well, where is 41? And also in here, you can hit enter, shows you the start date. That's 1106 to 1206. Where is file 41? Well, what this transaction file splitting allows you to do is take these old transaction files and move them. So I have taken the transaction files from 41 and before and moved them to a di different directory because they're not changing. It's from 06. I don't need to back them up every day. I can move them to a different directory, and that way, as I'm doing my backups, I'm reducing it. And actually, if I was really doing this, I'd probably only have five or six transaction files and will, would have moved all of them. The wonderful thing about Keystroke is it remembers where you moved it to. So I'm going to go back to Keystroke, and I can hit Control Home, and it'll say, hey, where do you want a transaction from? I want one from 1-1-2005. One, one, okay, it pulls up the transactions, everything before 131-2006. Well, what is this transaction file? I can hit that Shift F12 again, and I am looking at transaction file 32. Well, I didn't see 32 in my list. 32 is in this different directory I've got right here under trans dir about eight, line down, eight lines down or so that it's in C colon old transactions. So I've moved it out there, but Keystroke remembers where that is. That information is stored in KSTRN tbl.dat, the transaction table, remembers where everything is. So what does it look like to move those? Well, you don't even have to do it yourself. I can, if I get out of here, if I go into the Configuration manager, manager, under Files and Move, we've got this option. So I wanted to move, I think it was 41. And I am going to move it from my data directory to C colon backslash old TRN. All I have to do is click OK. Um, oh, I maybe I am on 42. And I'll put this in the from. And this will be C colon backslash old TRN and it moves the file. So now, if I, and I will move to, there we go, local disk C, I have this old TRAN directory, and if you see in here, I've got 42, 41, 40, 39, 38. So this is kind of my archive. I've got my old transaction. Those files aren't changing. Um, they're dated today because I unzipped them today. But uh, they are not changing. I don't have to back them up. When I do my backup, it makes that smaller, and I've got them archived. That could be a subdirectory of your data directory. It could be a separate directory on your network. And if you're not even looking at them anymore, if you've got 800 transaction files, um, you can push them aside so that you don't, you know, you can pull them out if you need to run reports from five years ago, but otherwise you've just got them archived on a CD or a remote hard drive. That is information about transaction file splits. It's a unique way of doing it. It makes data easy. It makes looking up transactions easy. Um, makes them easy to move and remembers where you moved them to. If you move them to three different directories, it'll remember which file is in which directory. If you don't want it to go look for those old files, you can always delete the transaction table, KSTRN TBL, then that'll get recreated when you start Keystroke. And then if it goes and looks for file 42, 
it won't find it because you deleted that list of where they are and it'll say, hey, where is it? And you can hit escape and it'll give up trying to find it or you can plug in the path of where it is if you end up moving those. So that's another thing you could do is I could move a, a big block of, of 500 transaction files manually from my data directory to my old tran, old trn directory. Then when I go and look for one of those files, it'll say, hey, where is it? I can put in old tran. It'll remember that when it goes to look for the file before that, it won't ask me again. It'll look in old tran because that's where the other file was. And if it finds it, it continues on. If it doesn't, it'll pop up and ask me again. So a lot you can do with the transaction file splits. It's a cool thing about Keystroke, a powerful feature. So uh, I am going to go ahead and unmute everybody. And are there any questions about the transaction files? I know that was kind of a quick presentation, but it's something I like, I get excited about. We're trying to pick out some of these cool little features that are very specific. Uh, hello? Hello? I have a question. Uh, uh, hi, uh, before everything. Uh, hi. Um, the, what was the application that you ran where you see the, the dates of the files? That was header. And if I switch back to that, that uh, are you seeing that? It's weird. It's not showing me. Is that being shared? But just at a DOS prompt in the keystroke directory, you type yeah. header. If I don't do any switches, it'll just go into the data directory. Um, you know, I did forward slash D a data switch, and I have my data in the D1 subdirectory of Keystroke. So I do that. I start it up. Um, and yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you. I found it. Yep, ask me to log in. I log in, and it pops up my list of transaction files. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. And then Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you very much for attending Keystroke Live today. We have Michael Gebb talking.